Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, sport, showbiz and beyond. Tonight, legendary US talk show host Yaron Brook, a man who has energetically used his platform to speak up for freedom, democracy, economic liberty and small governments. Yaron is the best-selling author of In Pursuit of Wealth, The Moral Case for Finance, as well as Free Market Revolution, Equal is Unfair, America's Misguided Fight Against Income Inequality. Yaron has also been a columnist at The Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Investors Business Daily and many other publications. And he has since hit the headlines with his hugely popular online talk show, The Aaron Brooks Show, which has amassed a huge global audience. I'm delighted to say that all the way from the United States, Yaron Brook joins us now. Hi, Yaron. Welcome back to GB News. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Very good to see you. Uh, listen, uh, inflation is, is, is like out of control in the United States. I'm shocked. And across the Western <laughs> world. <laughs> you, you predicted this months ago. Well, we did. I mean, it's obvious that when you uh, send people checks on the one hand, so you increase the amount of money people have to spend. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you keep them home so they can't produce anything. Then you get a mismatch between supply and demand. We know when demand is high, supply is low, prices go up. That's almost the law of physics. So, yes, uh, inflation was predictable. Uh, it's shocking that the uh, largest employer of PhDs in the world in economics, the Federal Reserve, missed it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but here we are. We've got inflation and it's going to be a struggle to get rid of it. Why have Western governments responded to the pandemic with socialism? Well, because I think they panicked mm. because I think that they saw China lock down. China is socialist. So it makes sense that they lock down. They don't care about individual rights. They don't care about individual freedom. They locked down. I think then when uh, the pandemic started appearing in Italy, Italy just panicked. They didn't know what to do. They looked at China. Hey, China, you know, is adored by, by many politicians in the West. They get stuff done. They have great infrastructure. They produce stuff. So why not mimic them when it comes to the pandemic? Once Italy locked down, then it was just a spiral. It, it's also the case that in the United States, for example, for, for months, really, they pretended it didn't exist. Hmm. So for February, Donald Trump was telling us, oh, this is not an issue. No problem. N nothing will happen here. The CDC developed a test that was useless and didn't allow anybody else to use a test. So uh, the American government completely blew this, completely screwed it up. And then once the pandemic hit New York, they panicked. They didn't know what to do. They locked down. Lockdown is the solution of ignorance and panic. Uh, no document written before the pandemic that describes what a government should do during a pandemic ever suggested locking people down. That's right. I mean, th these are uh, the, the policies of the Chinese Communist Party. It's, it's ultimately tyranny and, and similarly yeah. Yeah. economic policies, which have been very much to the left, essentially paying people money to stay at home. Well, yes. And, and it's more than that. Look, we, we've been mimicking China for a long time, uh, you know, in the, in both on the right and on the left in the United States. There's increased appetite for central planning. There's increased appetite for industrial policy, increased appetite for having a, a, a national policy around, uh, I don't know, semiconductor manufacturing or other kind of manufacturing. Uh, things that they look at China and China has done and they assume that is the that is the it's why China has been successful. That's a completely wrong analysis. It's not the source of Chinese success. And many people in the West are, are copying that. Look, politicians, their instinct is always towards more power. Uh, they might have a great platform. They might give great speeches. They might promote free markets and individual freedom. But once they get the power, they almost always increase the size of government. They almost always increase its controls over the economy and control over the individuals. And it doesn't matter in the United States whether it's the left or the right. Uh, look at Boris Johnson. A lot of a lot of promise there. And yet he's governing from the left. He's governing from the perspective of, of uh, government intervention, from the perspective of much bigger government involvement in the economy and in our lives. And do you think that the West will ever recalibrate back to its original values for which so many gave their lives, you know, economic and personal freedom? Well, ever is a long time. So uh, <laughs> hard to tell. I don't see it in the short run. I, I just don't see the politicians. I don't see the intellectual movement that will drive politicians in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when it, during the 1970s, when we got Margaret Thatcher and we got Ronald Reagan, that 
inched us a little bit in that direction, not enough in my view. Some of your viewers here will be shocked that I think Margaret Thatcher was too moderate, but uh, in economic policies. Uh, there was a whole intellectual movement. There were giants, intellectual giants, where there was Hayek in, in the UK, where there was uh, people like Milton Friedman, Mises, Ayn Rand, advocating for these ideas in the US. Today, the movement around liberty, liberty, uh, individual liberty, economic liberty, uh, it, it, it's just thin. It's 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 not. It's, it's considered a luxury. I mean, what did Arnold Schwarzenegger, movie star and former governor yeah. of California, say? Screw your freedom. Absolutely. And and look, Schwarzenegger should speak, right? Schwarzenegger came into power as a Milton Friedman-like pro-markets, pro-capitalism governor, and very as soon as he discovered that that wasn't very popular in California, shifted and ruled from and, and governed from the left. He was a he was. He was no different than the Democrat when it comes to California uh, politics. And he was very successful from an electoral perspective. So we can blame the politicians all we like, but at the end, it's not their fault. It's our fault. We get the politicians we deserve. Mm-hmm. We get the ideology we deserve. If we want to change, we have to change. That requires education. So back to your question of will we ever return? Yes, but it's going to take a while. It's going to take uh, new intellectual giants educating the public, educating us about, uh, us about the core values, the core principles at the foundation of liberty, at the foundation of freedom. That, and until we do that, we can tinker with tax rates, we can tinker with policies. That's not going to do it. We have to change the whole way we think about government. We have to limit its scope. We have to resurrect the concept, the Lockean concept of individual rights mm-hmm. and think about individual rights and, and the government's sole job is protecting those rights. That's going to take a massive program of education. But there will be a backlash people. against this big state, oh. won't there? A, a, because of the economic pain we're now feeling. Because, you see, I've fought against these COVID measures since the beginning. And I've always said, look, the bill hasn't come in yet. Oh, yeah. And here we are. And the press are calling today awful April because uh, we've seen fuel prices, of, well, basically energy. So to heat your home, that's going up by, in some cases, 50%. Fuel pump prices have gone through the roof. So now the bill is coming in. I wonder if there will be a backlash. But the only issue is, is the state now so big that we can't row back on its enormous footprint? I don't see where the backlash is coming anytime soon. Uh, Look, uh, 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 gas bills are easy. Why aren't you fracking? There's plenty of gas here on the island. Uh, but uh, we, we have uh, two to three decades worth of shale gas beneath our feet. Yes. Uh, a yes. well known to be clean fossil fuel. Yes. And we have the technology to get it. It's an easy technology. It's a safe technology. It's a technology used all over the United States, all over the world. You won't use it here. You won't accept it. So first, we have to we have to be willing to do the necessary things in order to provide for energy in, in, in this country and in the Western world. But then, you know, the state is huge. You're, you're talking about national insurance. You're talking about the NHS. You're talking about all these institutions. They're so ingrained. Who's going to challenge those institutions? And if I mention on a British campus the idea of privatizing the NHS or getting rid of the NHS, um, it's like, you know, I don't know. It's like I called for genocide or something. It's 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 I you know, I mean, it, it, you know, you could you could argue against any religion or anything, but you can't argue against the NHS. It's become a religion here. So until we educate people about their rights and the fact that the NHS is a massive violation of individual rights and the fact that it is indeed killing people. It, it is not providing the care and that, what, what that is possible. What do you mean by that? Get, get, you're, you're referring to its focus on COVID over the last two years, not treating other illnesses. Not treating other illnesses, but more than that, even before COVID. Look, uh, you, you have long lines, you have waiting, uh, uh, you know, people in this country die waiting for an MRI. They die waiting for treatment. It's, it's a government program. We don't trust the government to, I mean, I, I often run, run a business, run example. anything. I, I often ask audiences, here's an iPhone, a beautiful iPhone. Look at this iPhone. What do you think this would look like if a government committee designed it? And everybody laughs because everybody gets it, right? But healthcare, which is much more complicated and much more important than an iPhone, that we let the, we let the bureaucrats who can't run anything, that we let, we let them run it. Why do we expect better results? Uh, so... But that kind of thinking is so foreign in our culture today. We expect the government to provide us. We expect the government to solve our problems. Uh, Look at COVID. Instead of treating British, Americans, Westerners as adults, telling them the risks, telling them what was involved, 
and letting individuals make choices. If I have pre-existing conditions, maybe I stay home. Maybe I should isolate myself. Maybe I should lock myself down. If I'm young, if I'm 20 years old and I'm healthy and I'm a why shouldn't I go out? I, if I'm 85, yeah, probably stay home. Well, but perhaps that young person will go out and generate a national income for the country, which will pay for the care of that older, vulnerable relative. I mean, think about COVID. COVID was this disease, in a sense, we were lucky because it afflicted the old. So it shouldn't have had any economic consequences because the fact is who produces, who works, who actually generates income? The young who were not afflicted that badly by COVID. So it shouldn't have been a disease. And, and if they were afflicted, afflicted badly, then the government could easily have had the economic largesse to protect them. If we'd spent a fraction of what was spent yes. protecting the vulnerable yes. and letting the healthy get on with it. Absolutely. We could have cocooned the elderly, protected them from getting the Money virus. no object. And letting the rest of us live. Mm. Right. And, and we could have provided them with food. We could have provided them with aid. There's a lot of ways in which we, and it would have, the bill would have been a fraction of what it landed up being, and people would have continued working. So there would be no supply chain bottlenecks because production would have continued. The reason we have supply chain bottlenecks, the primary reason, is because we, we stop production. We stop producing. We thought stuff just appears magically, uh, and it doesn't. Somebody actually has to go to work, and when you prevent people from going to work, you prevent stuff from being created, and you create shortages. Now, I'm all for the principle that we receive Healthcare at the point of need. Uh, we don't want a situation where you've got to produce your credit card after you've been in a road traffic accident. So the principle of free healthcare, as such, even though of course it's not free, I think is sacred to most Brits, myself included. But I'm all for delivering it in the most efficient way. The NHS employs over a million people in this country. It's the biggest employer in Europe. I'm sure it could be a leaner fighting machine. But we don't want an American model, do we? Because the Americans pay about twice the amount that we pay through taxes for a service that's half as good. Well, I don't know that it's half as good. I think it's actually better. I, I, won't, I won't replace the healthcare I get in the United States with anybody's healthcare. I get the best service in the world. I get the best treatment in the world. And if it costs me a little bit more, that's fine. Because I live, not, the, I live better and I live a little the, longer. The American healthcare system is not fit for purpose. It doesn't protect all Americans, does it? I mean, it's hardly the model to aspire to. No, it's not the model to aspire to because it's too socialist. It has too much government involvement. Uh, over 50 percent of all government ex of all expenditures on health care in the United States are paid by the government. If you're over 65, you have socialized health care in the United States it's called Medicare. If you're poor, you have socialized health care. It's called Medicaid. Uh, the idea that the American model is a private model is absurd. It's far from private. If a country, America or any other country, had a purely private model, a real insurance market and a real healthcare market that were private, unregulated, uncontrolled. Uh, you know, it's only in my imagination, unfortunately, but prices would be a lot lower and uh, efficiency, which you discussed, would be far higher. Uh, quality would be through the roof. You can't even imagine how good it could be. I mean, look, take uh, take LASIK surgery, mm. which is surgery in your eyes to, to improve. Not in, a, in the United States, not covered by any health insurance, and it's not provided by the government. Uh, what happens to price of that? It comes down every single year. Quality goes up every single year. Take, uh, you know, health care for pets, which is a big industry in the United States, probably in the UK Absolutely as well. It is. Not covered by Medicare. And government does not get involved in funding anything regarding health care for pets. And yet again, price of insurance has gone down. Quality has and gone no way trouble up. getting an appointment. And your, no your trouble getting an appointment. And, and, I, I, and I bet you that if a pet is dying, uh, they're always treated, even when you don't show that, that insurance card. So, uh, no... I think you should you should question the possibility of having an NHS more efficient unless it's much more private. It, you need the price mechanism. You need prices in order to achieve efficiency. That's how every private market works. And it's a wonder that all these other markets, we get these beautiful, amazing products in the private sector, and yet healthcare somehow that's different. No, it's not. It's the same as any other service. We just need to trust the market, understand how it works, 
put in, if you want, put in some safeguards to protect the most checks vulnerable. And yeah. uh, checks and balances, the market provides beautiful checks and balances. It's called bankruptcy and going bust, and it's caused uh, lawsuits and stuff like that. that the poorest will still be cared for. Yes, I, I actually think the poorest are cared for best uh, in a free market. Let me, last point, you know, in a free market under capitalism, there are a lot less poor people because so much wealth is created. I told you this man's not boring. No wonder he's one of America's most watched U.S. political commentators. He is the star of the Yaron Brook show on YouTube.